What do you say? Are you in? I said, Red Eye, I'll go for it. I sure as hell ain't gonna put a mop in my hand out here. I don't have wheels, but I've got a little scratch. I'll spring to rent a short. You know someone with one? How about a driver? He said, Ice, lay a double saw on me to cop a short. I know a stud for the driver. Meet me right here in this joint tomorrow night at nine. We could take off our first mark. I said, don't crack my name to that driver. Call me Tom, Frank, anything. I didn't get two hours sleep that night. It worried me to be a part of a hustle that required a rod. I thought, Maybe I'd better back out. I could maybe find a young hash slinger in a greasy spoon. I could turn her out in a hurry. She'd be a long shot for stardom. At least she'd make enough scratch for chump expenses. You can't start pimping with a turnout. It never works. A pimp with no whore and no bankroll is a sucker to try the turnout on the mulish square broad. No, I guess the red-eye deal is all I got. Red Eye got to the joint at 10.30. The driver was a huge stud with a wrapper like a girl's. I noticed his big meat hooks shaking on the steering wheel on our way to the west side. Red Eye ran down our first mark. His light maroon eyes were whirling. He had a skull full of H. He said, Paul, our first mark is a bird's nest on the ground. It's a broad. The finger showed her to me last night. She and her old man got the best smack on the west side. It's so good, studs from all over town are rushing the cop every night. He and the broad deal out of a bar three blocks from their pad. They deal mostly in eighths and sixteenths. On a weeknight like this one, they can take off maybe five G's. The stud has got a rep as a fast rod joker. He ain't got no direct syndicate connections as far as I know. We ain't got to worry about him tonight. He's in New York copping a supply. The broad will leave the bar around midnight loaded with scratch. She'll have a few packs of smack on her too for the evidence to shake her. Her real name is Mavis Sims. She's gonna go to her short park behind the bar. She ain't afraid of being heisted. Everybody is scared shitless of her old man. He's got a small rod strapped to her thigh. She ain't gonna pull it out on the police, though. That's us. Strange rollers from downtown. We gotta move fast on her when she bits that lot behind the bar. She's a slick bitch. We got to be real rollers. We can't wake her up with fakes. She's a strong bitch. I'd have to blow a hole in her if she'd reach for her rod. There will be a pack of hard studs in the bar. They would love to croak us on that lot to please her old man. We got to move her fast out of the neighborhood to play her out of the scratch. We got to be careful the rollers don't join our party. Her old man is doing a lot of greasing in the district. Perry is going to park our short in the street beside the lot. We got to arrest the broad, and you play on her while Perry drives. I ain't going to rap, or maybe queer things. Ice, after we cop her, it's up to you for the shake. You got to convince her. Perry was real nervous. He pulled into the curb next to the bar lot. His skull was jiggling on his bull neck like he had Parkinson shakes. I was silent. Red Eye's rundown had me wondering how it shaped up as a bird's nest to him. It looked like maybe a bird's nest for Dillinger. If the mark hadn't been abroad, I'd have split and got on an L train. I wonder if she'd seen me before I went to the joint. What if she made me right away as Iceberg and plugged me in the skull? Her old man might have outfit friends. If he did, 
we'd be found in an alley with our balls rammed down our throats. We were standing in the shadows ten feet from the broad short. I said, Red, I better take the rod. When we step out on her, shine the flashlight right in her eyes. She was walking fast when she came into the lot. Her light blue chiffon dress was billowing in the April breeze. She was walking wide-legged like a whore after a long night in a two-dollar house. My legs were trembling like a stud dog's hung up in a bitch. I looked down at the badge pinned to the wallet in my palm. It glittered like molten silver in the moonlight. The thirty-two pistol in my right hand weighed a sweaty ton. She was twirling a key ring. In the utter silence, the clinking sound like the U.S. Marshal handcuffs. She had her hands on the door handle. I stepped out of the shadows. Red Eye was behind me. I wonder if she could hear my ticker hammering. Red Eye put the light in her face. Her yellow forehead wrinkled in surprise. Her sexy jib flapped open. I grabbed her wrist and tried to crush it. I roared, Police! What's your name and why are you sneaking around back here? She stammered, Gloria Jones, I was coming to my car. I always park it here. Now get out of the way. I'm going home. The captain of this district is a personal friend of my husband's. Red Eye had turned off the flashlight and moved behind her. She was looking down at the badge. She was trying to yank her wrist free. I said in a low, heavy voice, You lying, dope-peddling bitch. Your real Monica is Mavis Sims. We're from downtown. Your old man's no pal of ours. We're gonna bust you, bitch. I lay odds we've caught you dirty. Come on, bitch, before we get rough. Anything I hate, it's a stinking smack dealer. We hurled her into the back seat of our short. Red got in beside her. I was up front with Perry. I turned facing the rear seat. There was silence as Perry drove out of the district towards central headquarters. Miss Sims was squirming in the seat. Her right hand was out of sight behind her. She was getting very jerky. I remembered that rod she was carrying. I started to shake. I said, Al, this suspect is acting peculiarly. Perhaps you'd better pull over. She might have concealed some evidence behind the seat. He pulled over. Red moved toward her. She slid to the window on the other side. She said, Officers, I'm clean. It's worth fifty apiece to cut me loose. If you bust me, I'll be out in an hour. Take me back to the bar. I can get the hundred and fifty from the bar owner. I said, No dice, sister. We've got specific orders to bring you in. Now don't make him slap a broad around. He's gonna frisk you. He don't have to wait for a matron to do it downtown. It's proper if he thinks you're armed and we're in danger. He patted the inside of her thighs. It was there, a twenty-two automatic jammed under the top of her stocking. He took it out and shoved it in his pocket. Searched her bosom, purse, shoes, and hair. She was sure clean, except for the rod. I felt like a real chump. All this trouble for nothing. He was scratching his chin. The junkie punk had put a bum finger on the broad. I was at the point of shoving her out. Then it struck me. Where did my street whores hide their scratch? In the cat. In the cat, where else? The clincher was this broad's wide-legged walk. I had noticed it on the lot. She was leaning forward, staring at Perry's face. I said, Joe, it's gotta be up her cat. Bitch, stretch out and put your legs across his lap. She said, The hell I will. You phony niggas ain't rollers. That big one at the wheel used to bounce in Mario's. She was wise. The double saw I gave Red Eye had tapped me out. We had to know if she had treasure up her cat. I wonder how he'd handle it. I didn't wonder long. He turned brute. He punched her hard in the nose. It was like he had cut her throat. Blood splattered over the front of her dress. 
I felt a light spray on my face. She opened her mouth to scream. He smothered it with a terrible slam to the gut. She went limp. He pulled her across him. He darted his paw between her legs. When he brought his mitt out, it made a kissing sound. He had a long, shiny plastic tube between his index and middle fingers. It stank like rotten fish. The broad was moaning and holding both hands to her nose. He unwrapped the package. The pouch was bursting with scratch. In the center of the roll, I saw the cellophane edges of packaged dope. He got out and opened the door on the broad side. He dragged her out to the sidewalk. He got in the front seat. Perry gunned away. I kept a sharp eye on Red Eye as he counted the scratch in his lap. Red Eye and I netted two grand apiece. Red Eye took the packages of H. The broad dealer had 4,400 in the pouch. Perry and the junkie finger man got two bills apiece. It was a week before we tried for the second mark. We shouldn't have. He was a reefer peddler and fence. We thought he had big scratch on him. We didn't have a driver. We had the mark in the short. Red Eye was driving. We were playing the peel off. The mark was in the back seat. I was in the front seat. I asked for his identification. He handed me his hide. I saw it, it only had a few slats in it. We were pulling to the curb to search him. A two man squad car passed. The marks saw them and started screaming. They stopped and dragged Red Eye and me out to the street. They kicked and beat the hell out of us. They took us down. The mark was slick. Right there on the street, he cracked we took a C note from him. If he'd known about our role, he could have beefed for four G's. The rollers saw our rolls and tried to pin every stick up on the book against us. We went on every show up for a week. We didn't get a finger. They booked us for armed robbery of the mark.